This is the gambogram which illustrates the anion gap. The first thing to emphasize would be that the cations would always be equal to the anions in terms of electrical charge, maintaining electrical neutrality and thermodynamic equilibrium. The anion gap is calculated by taking the measured cations, which in this case is sodium, subtracted by the measured anions, which would be the chloride and the bicarbonate. The normal anion gap is usually assumed at 12 milliequivalents per liter. However, albumin is the main component in the unmeasured anionic charge. And in the presence of low albumin, the anion gap will be reduced in hypoalbuminemia. For every one gram per deciliter reduction in serum albumin, the anion gap will reduce by 2.5 milliequivalents per liter. If you use grams per liter for every one gram per liter reduction in serum albumin, the anion gap will reduce by 0.25 milliequivalents per liter. In normal anion gap metabolic acidosis, bicarbonate is lost, for example, through the gastrointestinal tract or through renal losses. Chloride increases, and this will maintain charge equilibration. And therefore, the anion gap remains unchanged. The causes of NECMA are easy to remember. There are only two main causes. One would be gut loss through loss of bicarbonate from the gastrointestinal secretions. Two would be renal losses either a loss of bicarb or a failure of hydrogen ion excretion. We go on to further workup after the diagnosis of a NECMA. Step 1. To determine if a renal tubular acidosis is present. Here we will have to use another anion gap, not in the serum, but in the urine. Again, the urine anion gap is also a reflection of unmeasured anions, and this is calculated by taking measured cations subtracted by the measured anions. And therefore, the formula for the urine anion gap is urine sodium plus potassium minus chloride. In this case, in urine, potassium is included as the variability of potassium is very high in urine. A normal individual has a urine anion gap of more than or equals to zero. This is the gamble gram for the urine anion gap. Keeping in mind that the charge equilibrium between cations and anions are always balanced. In a normal patient with normal kidneys and in a normal circumstance, when you take the urine anion gap, sodium, plus potassium minus chloride, the value will be around zero or just slightly around zero, above zero. In the presence of a non-renal bicarbonate loss or excessive acid load, a normal kidney will respond by trying to excrete H plus or hydrogen ion. And this is buffered and excreted as ammonium in the urine. In such cases, if you take the urine anion gap, which is the urine sodium plus potassium minus the chloride, you will get a value that is less than zero. This is because the urine chloride will have to increase in order to match the extra cationic charge from the ammonium. In the presence of metabolic acidosis, and in kidneys which are not responding appropriately to the metabolic acidosis. What you might find is that there is no change in the urine and ion gap in that it is still above or at zero. And this suggests that there is a failure of acidification as in type 1 RTA, and there is no increase in the urinary ammonium. 
or it could be due to bicarbonate loss. And this will be type 2 RTA, where we start seeing bicarbonate appear in the urine. And if you take the urine anion gap again, this would be more than zero. Urine ammonium is normally paired with chloride in the urine. However, if the urine ammonium is excreted with another type of anion, the urine anion gap may not truly reflect the concentration of ammonium in the urine. Examples of anions would include beta-hydroxybutyrate, and you might see this in diabetic ketoacidosis, acetoacetate, bicarbonate, or hypurate, which we'll see in glue sniffing. In such cases, we need to calculate the urine osmolar gap. The urine osmolar gap is calculated by subtracting urine osmolality from urine osmolarity. Urine osmolality is measured in the lab, while urine osmolarity is calculated by this formula, 2 times sodium plus potassium plus urea plus minus glucose, depending on whether it is present in the urine. Normal urine osmolar gap is between 10 to 100 milliosmoles per kilogram. Ammonium accounts for half of this urine osmolar gap. The other half of the urine osmolar gap is accounted by the paired anions to ammonium. If there is a normal response to metabolic acidosis, there is an increase in ammonia excretion and therefore the urine osmolar gap would increase to more than 200 or 300 milliosmoles per kilogram. If there is distal renal tubular acidosis or impaired acidification of the urine, the urine osmolar gap remains below 150 milliosmoles per kilogram.